Hi, I'm Mike Thomas of Kiwi Indian Parts and Motorcycles. On this uh, video, we're going to do the installation of the Kiwi electric starter. First off, we've got to remove a few things. Remove the front brake rod, undo the cotter pin at the back, and pull the brake rod out. You do not need to remove this one. And then you've got to remove the exhaust system. Exhaust system, two bolts here, take the strap off. You've got a bolt down here. You usually have a clamp that comes off the muffler body here, and then the runner, one at the tailpipe back here. And then that'll grant us access to the chain guard. The chain guard's got to come off. We've got a bolt up here, one down yonder, another one down here, and these three usually have nuts on them undo those and quite often you don't have to undo the stoplight switch wires i usually don't that usually can be a pain in the ass that'd be down here so what i do is i just leave that together i wrap the chain guard in a towel and then set it up on here and then use a bit of masking tape to to hold it out there so it doesn't fall down so that's how you're playing around with those wires. Once you get the chain guard off, sit, wrap it in a towel, set it up on the rear fender, put a bit of um, masking tape around it to hold it there. In order to get the chain guard off, you've got to put the kickstarter down. Just an easy way of doing all this by yourself. Just get a tie down and hold it down. Chain guard's off. You gotta get the retaining clip off, which you can actually see that little groove that's in there. Just get a screwdriver and then pry the retaining clip off. Quite often you've actually got to push the Kickstarter in just to take the pressure off. So you can actually see there's a little bit of, once you push it in, and the retaining ring will go back and get your screwdriver, pull that clip off and get the Kickstarter off. Then you'll remove the, the um, Kickstarter gear on the training. And it's just undo the lock washer. And this is your standard right hand nut. Remove the sprocket nut. And we've got to remove the seat post. Or in order to remove the seat post, remove that this nut from underneath the bike and the seat post will pull out from the top and we've got to remove the kickstart stud so undo the set screw and this will come out there's a hole in the left side of the casting so on the left side of the bike put a punch in there and you can pound that stud out You've got to remove the kickstart stud out of the frame. The first thing you've got to do is under the seat post. Right at the top here, you'll see two lock nuts. Undo those. I've already removed it from this bike. Undo that, those, and that way you can lift the seat up, the seat post up. You've got to get it above this area here, because this is where you're going to drive it out. This kickstart stud needs to be replaced. Undo the set screw. And it'll come out. Sometimes there are bits to come out. Uh, nine times out of ten they come out pretty easy. But, you know, just keep in mind it's been there since 1946, 47, whenever. Fit the new, this is an eccentric or offset kickstart stud. Both shafts are not in line with each other. So it's on a cam, and this way it'll allow you to get the correct chain tension. In order to get the kickstart stud out, put a punch in the hole there, and then drive it out. Like I said, they can be a bitch to get out, but generally they come out okay. Remove the kickstart stop, since you're not gonna be needing it anymore. 
and this kickstart spring anchor point here the lobe just trim it from the edge of the hole still leave the hole there so if you ever want to go back to a kickstarter you can but just trim it to the outside edge of that hole and the reason for that is it's got to fit down inside this recess of the electric starter when you receive your electric starter you'll find an envelope and inside the envelope you'll have a checklist so double check all the components against the checklist and the step-by-step -step instructions these are the parts that are included with your electric starter you've got your instructions and parts checklist to ensure that everything's in the box electric starter sprag bearing chain with a master link starter support it's anchor bolt starter cables starter button assembly with wires battery hold down bolts for the tight hold down and you got the collar thrust washer that goes on the end of the um, kickstart stud and the set screw to replace the um, stud set screw you take the old one out and you replace it with this new one This is the Kiwi electric starter unit. Quite a nice, compact, well-designed unit. Solenoid on the end. Pretty nice unit. Um, I don't know how many times I hear people say, ah, oh, it's just a common starter. And here is nothing but an uncommon starter. Um, for a starter, it rotates the opposite way to all your starters on the market. So that means there's some proprietary stuff in there. Or quite a bit of proprietary stuff. You've got your electric starter. You go through a reduction unit, which has a sprag in here. So uh, that means that it's got a... Because the starter rotates the opposite way, the sprag has to work the opposite way in here. So it's starter got a reduction gearbox in through here and then we got another reduction gearbox out here there's a lot of engineering into this part very very well made uh, we do the final drive through chain and the reason why I went with chain drive is because frames where the stud comes out can be tweaked over the years so this way with the uh, a chain drive it's going to allow was well, going to take up some misalignment so things can be misaligned which they are and the chain is very forgiving this is a sprag bearing or one-way clutch quite a heavy duty unit it has to be since it's starting the motorcycle this actually fits over the main shaft um, the bearings we get uh, out of uh, Germany. They're actually made to our spec. They've got more surface area on the little dumbbells and um, also using a high temperature grease because it's close to the exhaust and it sees heat. So that's another thing they do for us. Fantastic company to work with, but actually there's a lot of expense and engineering just into this little part. There's a couple of optional items to order with your electric starter. One is the offset kickstart stud, which is pretty well a necessity. So order that up. And also the battery we sell. Um, we've ran into problems before with people buying cheaper batteries and they go, oh, electric starter doesn't work. Well, actually it comes down to the battery. The starter itself does work. So for that reason, I highly recommend um, the battery we, we sell. Uh, yes, it is more money, but it is a hell of a lot. You're getting a hell of a lot more for your money. Now that you've got the casting all nicely radiused and ground down close to the hole, put the set screw in the hole. And you've got to start somewhere. The, 
the studs on a cam we don't know where the final tension is going to be so i usually start out straight up and down push the stud in and just nip it up you don't have to do it tight at this point because you might have to come back and adjust the chain or you probably are going to have to so just put a little just nip it up a little bit one of the things we do need to go over is the uh, where the battery cradle tabs fit to the fender so originally they fitted this way so the battery tabs are exposed some guys will mount the fender so these are on the underside well what that does is that's going to bring this um, this whole fender further forward and this can run into the battery so just be aware of that that's something we, and that it depends on where the cam is your, your 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 chain adjustment is so obviously the further you get this back it's going to run into that further forward it's going to give more clearance you just don't know from bike to bike but that's about the only issue you could run into is if somebody has incorrectly mounted the um, the rear fender, but it's still all stuff you can overcome. Now this is where the tape comes in handy. It slides in. Easily over the stud. Now what you're trying to do, what has to be done, actually, this needs to be close to the transmission. So make sure that does happen. Uh, sometimes it's not. It's going to be hung up on something. It could be hung up on that casting lobe. It's not ground down enough and not sitting far enough into the back of the electric start. And sometimes uh, there is variance from bike to bike. Sometimes you've had to chop a little bit off the back of the stud. If you do that, just make sure if you cut an eighth of an inch off the back, you also widen this groove by eighth of an inch. So it goes, the set screw sits into that groove. But you can see the difference. It's only about an eighth of an inch. But that's something that's beyond our control. That's variation from at the factory. And it is what it is. But you want to get that starter in as f f close to the transmission as possible. Because that's going to give you more clearance when the chain goes is, is fitted. That's a rear drive chain. Make sure this part of the starter is down to bare steel. Sometimes the powder coater misses masking it. But this is where the ground strap mat mounts to. So just make sure it's down to uh, bare steel. So we can get a good ground. Fit the sprag bearing sprocket assembly to the main shaft. There's no modifications you need to do to the main shaft. We're using it, leaving it as factory. There's no additional grinding you need to do to it. The Kiwi electric starter is a nice, direct, easy fit. No need to even remove your rear fender. This is just really easy. And it just fits on like so. Now the sprocket alignment, Needs to be within a sixteenth of an inch. It's not that critical. That's why I do chain drive because it's different. There's quite a bit of variation from frame to frame. So if you're in America, you'll use this side of the rule. If you're down under Canada, Europe, you'll use this side of the rule. That one's in millimeters. Just a little joke. Anyway, if you need to push, get an alignment. You're going to press on this hub part, but support it on this part of the bearing, of the sprag bearing. That's very important. Do not support it out here and then push on the hub through the bottom side. Just make sure where, whichever way you're pushing. So you'll support it here on this area here in a race of the sprag, and then you'll press on the hub or be vice versa you'll support it out here and then you'll push it 
on here. That's very important. There's variance from bike to bike. The other thing is, when Frank designed the four-speed, for whatever reason, he made his line, main shaft longer. And I can't, it's just, I, I, I can't compromise between the two. It's one or the other. So that's the one thing you may have to do, differences between the three-speed and the four-speed. That just goes on like so. To put the right tension on the chain is no big deal. We want a little bit of slack in it. Pull the starter out. So you can get the wrench in and undo the set screw. And then you're gonna turn the stud. I've designed the stud so it's got two flats on it. So you can put a wrench on it. Now this is exaggerating. If you wanna tighten the chain, you're actually gonna rotate it this way and it's gonna move the stud this way and the opposite will be happening. If you rotate that way, it's gonna get closer into the transmission. So it's pretty, pretty easy little process. Once you get it in the right position, lock it in with the Allen wrench. Just a, a little FYI, when it comes to chain master links, we're actually gonna pull it off. Uh, uh, we've got some other steps to do up now that we got this done, but the master link clip, the bum, the back side of it, goes in the direction of chain. So the chain's gonna rotate this way, but a little clip, the bum end, closed end is gonna be there. The open end, as you can see, is gonna be tailing. It's gonna be following. Just always remember that's your standard rule on chains, rear chains on drive chains, any chain. Fit the sprocket, tighten up the nut with the impact. You're actually gonna need a tool, this tool here that we sell. This end does that nut. This one does the clutch hub nut. Then bend over the lock tab into its notch. Fit the bronze thrust washer over the kickstart stud. But it's actually got to sit down onto the starter collar here. That little sleeve, just put it on there. Now apply plenty of grease. Both of these have got to have a lot, a lot of grease on it. Likewise, on the collar. The collar I put with a set screw facing forwards at the bottom. And that way you can get access to it with the chain guard on. Put plenty of grease on those. This is your brace. So it's gonna sit down a battery cradle bolt on one end. And like so there. Now, don't tighten down the bolts until you've got them, both of them in and the nut started. This one's gonna go in that way. And the starter cable, this is the ground cable. Actually, it's going to be the 5 16 end. You're actually going to sit it like so up against the starter. That's why we cleaned off that all the paint, powder coat off the backside so we can get a good ground. And the nut and the wash is going to sit up against it. Yeah, this is with the bracket installed. It just sits down there like so. Got your battery cable on the back side, buttered right up against the starter frame, metal to metal. And underneath the bike, there she is there. Be prepared to get your hands dirty under there. You've got a lot of road grime and grit and shit to, that'll get over, chain grit and shit that'll get all over your hands. Yeah, that'll be the enjoyable part. So we've got these in stock. These are the, I call them the chain puller together. So they'll pinch it together and make it easy to put the master links in. Likewise, for the starter one as well. 
So it's a, it's a great little tool to have. Set the sprag bearing sprocket assembly on. The slides on. Use some blue Loctite on the threads. And then tighten the nut up. Just needs to be tight. Blue Loctite and it won't come off. And then fit your chain. When you put your electric starter chain on, the master link, you want to have it somewhere between these two. You don't want to put it to here because then you can't get the master link in from the back side, likewise up here. So put it either on the top portion here in the open section or down here. That way you can get the tool in and you can actually get the master link in from the back side. Just make sure, you know, once again, you start a change going this way. So the closed part of the master link should be going first, the bum end. And likewise, on your rear chain. Your rear chain is going this way. So then you're putting the closed end or bum end first and the tail end following. Sometimes the starter chain gets close to the case. This one here's got some decent clearance. If you've got an O-ring chain, it's gonna be even closer. Sometimes you can't run a O-ring chain um, that's variance from the factory. That's, that's beyond my control. That's um, variance from, from the factory of how the Kickstarter, how all this, you know, it's all, all located from this Kickstarter pivot stud that's into the casting. And, and that can vary from the frame, you know, how they machine it, which is factory, it's not Kiwi. So sometimes that, that starter will go on further than others. Um, it's just the nature of the beast. It doesn't seem to matter. You can just have a little bit of clearance here. The chain doesn't seem to wear anything. So not too much to worry about there. This is the Kiwi electric starter. Here you've got your starter motor down here. Then it's got a reduction gearbox here. And then I've got another reduction gearbox out here. It's not a common starter. For a starter, it rotates the opposite direction. So it's, it's a proprietary special made item. Um, the final drive I do through chain. The reason I do through chain is because it'll take up any misalignment. If the kickstart stud is not in proper alignment with the um, transmission main shaft, if it's cocked in any way, chain will actually take up any variance. Uh, you don't have to grind anything on the main shaft. You don't have to take off a rear fender, nothing. This is a direct fit. You don't have to do any modifications to your frame or your motorcycle. Just a direct, nice, easy, clean fit. Your starter button mounts under the seat post casting. There's two wires that come out of it, a long and a short. The long one's gonna go up to the ignition, ignition switch. It's gonna be on the hot side of the switch when it's turned on to ignition. So the same wire that goes down to your coil is what you wanna mount that wire to. So when the ignition switch is off, it's off. And the short wire, is kind of come down to the front side of the solenoid. Right here. Battery positive wire is going to connect to back side of the solenoid. See, it does a U-turn under there, goes that way, does a nice U-turn, and it's going to sit on the battery, or battery, depends what, what part of the world you come from, like so. Your negative lead or earth lead, some parts of the world call it, comes out like so, and it's get on a, gonna fit on the negative side of the battery. Battery fits in like so. Put the battery clamp on top. 
drop it through, and then you're gonna have a washer and a nylock nut, which nylock nut is gonna be like so. It'll fasten to the bottom on each side. A safety issue is not to have the battery positive lead that's going down the solenoid here, making any contact or resting up against the starter. You want it away from the starter. What can happen is down the road, as you're riding down the road, um, the bike's bouncing up and down and things can chafe. I mean, even though things are tight, things can chafe and you don't want to short. As you can see here, I re-angled that lead. So if need be, bend the, the uh, terminal on the, on the lead itself. Put the seat post down and then put the nuts on the bottom of the seat post with that large flat washer. Those are jam nuts. Tighten them up. Then adjust the rear chain. You should be looking going off memory about three quarters of an inch up and down. Rotate the chain, rotate the rear wheel. Sometimes you can have a tight spot on the chain, so you gotta take an average. So just don't leave it on one spot and go, okay, that's right, because it may not be. To adjust the rear chain, you undo the axle nut, the hollow axle nut or the bearing support nut. nut. Nice narrow spanner like that is ideal. We've got those in stock, Kiwi Indian. Um, you undo the jam nut here and tighten up this bolt here. Screw it in to tighten it up and that'll tighten up the chain. On this side, it's the same thing, just easier to see. You've got the lock nut or the nut and then the adjuster. Just make sure it's settle into the little recess there then stand back make sure the wheels centered but you you'll do it to the front wheel as well that's pretty well straightforward the chain goes pretty straightforward in order to get it on over the bell crank just push the bell crank forward and then it'll slide on there the chain guard lip the lip that's on the chain guard goes in under the fender probably a little hard to see but it's actually on the inside of the fender so it's a little nip and tuck under there slide it in just be careful with your paint don't tighten any of your bolts up just set them all in top one your bottom one don't do any of your final tightening until they're all on sometimes you got to jiggle them around a little bit Put your stop light switch wire clip on the same one it come off on. It's pretty straightforward. Put some tape over the front. When you put the exhaust on, it'll um, it'll save you a scratch in the paint. Put the shift the bell crank, put the shift tower, and just make sure you got clearance between the bell crank and the fins, which you should have. Put your brake rod on. Put your shift rod. Put your brake rod. Make sure that you've got clearance here when the brake is applied. So push hard on your brake pedal. Always make sure that you've got clearance there and it's not bottoming out. In order to get that clearance, you'll adjust your brake rod here or here. And put your exhaust on. Starts looking like a motorcycle again. This is the faux kickstart arm. Just fits over the kicker shaft. First off, tap this to 5 16 24. It comes 5 16 32 because that's a Zerk fitting. So just re tap it 5 16 24. You can use your existing pedal and pin or you can purchase a new one from us. Put some grease on the thrust washer and just fits over the kickstart pin like so. Tighten up the set screw 
whichever the location you want it. And then there'll be this retaining washer that you'll put on. And the, and the purpose for the retaining washer is just so you can't, if, if something should fail, that, that little uh, set screw should fail, you're not gonna lose that going down the road. It really is that easy. Almost looks like factory. It's non-functional, but it certainly looks the part. As you can see, it's a pretty easy installation. Enjoy.